most women start a business? Is it passion, money, or freedom? Welcome to Female Founders, the podcast that takes you behind the scene with women who are founders and CEOs to help you start and scale a successful business of your own. I am your host, Nagelia de Ravine. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Female Founders. Today I am pleased to speak with Amanda Hoffman, founder and CEO of Elman to Mom LLC. Amanda is a military veteran who served in the Air Force for six years as a civil engineer. She later traded her combat boots for a diaper bag to stay home with her two boys and follow her husband's military career in the Space Force. She hosts the Women of the Military podcast. She is the author of two books and a freelance writer for many military publications. Good morning, Amanda. What a pleasure to have you with me today. I look forward to learning more about Airmen to Mom LLC and also about your journey as a military veteran and now serving in the Air Force. So now you are a military veteran. Like I just said, you serve in the Air Force for six years as a civil engineer. So what was the motivation behind joining the Air Force? So for me, September 11th was a big motivation that happened my senior year of high school, and it kind of opened my eyes to the military. And it also changed the generation of people around me. And when I was in college, a lot of my friends were looking into the military and that patriotism of September 11th kind of pushed me to look into it as well. And so that was how I ended up joining the Air Force. So how long did you spend? You spent six years there? Yeah, I did a four-year ROTC program, which was while I was going to college, I became an officer. So each year I did different training to prepare me. So it was four years of training and then six, six and a half years on active duty. Wow. It took all of pretty much 10 and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. My husband's wow. still in, so we're still connected to the military today. <laughs> Oh, well, all I can say is thank you for your service, for uh, dedicating your from high school to starting that, because not everyone take that step in doing it. So when someone take the step to protect our country, so it's appreciated. Thank you. No problem. So now, can you tell us more about Airmen to, to Mom LLC and how it's come to be? Yeah, so when I left the Air Force, I had just had a my baby, my son, and I was trying to find myself and my identity. I lost who I was of being a civil engineer and a captain, and it transitioned to being a stay-at-home mom, and it wasn't oh. quite what I expected. And so through writing, I started to find myself again. So originally, it was more of a hobby blog, and I would just write about random things. But over time, I started to realize the more I talked about my time in the service or other veterans' times in the service, people wanted to hear more. And so that started a trend and narrowed down my focus and helped me find my audience and led to what I'm doing today. <laughs> so when you say that, um, did you leave? I know you talk about being become a mom. Did you leave the Air Force because you become a mom? Was that the reason why? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of different factors. My husband's still active duty and he's in the Space Force now. And because we were both active duty in the Air Force, we knew that it was going to be really challenging to live in the same location. And so it was kind of like the writing on the wall that eventually we would end up being one person living in one state and one in another. And, And deployments were really high. As a civil engineer, we were deploying really regularly. So I knew that I would likely deploy and leave behind a six month to one year old. Mm-hmm. And I was, I'd already deployed and I didn't want to do that with a baby and postpartum. And so it was like all those different factors that led to me decide to leave the military. And become a mom. I think that's, um, I probably would have done the, the same thing too. I, I think our children, as much as uh, serving our country, I think you did 10 and a half years. You did all you can for the country already. So it's time for the kid because that make it different in the kid life if you are here or not. Yeah, I think it was a good decision for our family. It provided stability and mm-hmm. it, I mean, it's been challenging enough with just my husband being in and it would have been way more complicated with both of us in. So mm-hmm. I think it was the right decision for us. I think so too. Do you still travel to be where your husband is or do you just stay in one location now? 
Yeah, we actually just moved from Virginia to California this summer. So we've wow. we've moved from Ohio to California and then California to Virginia and Virginia to California. So Oh my goodness. We've, <laughs> we've moved a lot in the last that's in the last ten years, so uh it's been a little bit crazy. I think I have a feeling your son is enjoying that because you get to see different uh part of the country. Uh I my oldest, he's nine now, and I think it's hard to say goodbye to friends that the older you get. That's so true. he has got to see a lot of the country. Last year, we traveled to 27 states because we were like, because COVID was over and we were trying to like see all the Northeast. And then we had drove down South and then we drove across the country. Oh and my so goodness. We saw a lot, but he, he's, to the point where he doesn't want to have to say goodbye to his friends and so um i think there's a lot of like good things but then there's bad things too bad things that's true when you're leaving your friends behind so let's talk a little bit more about the company itself can you tell us more about air mom llc and the services that it offers yeah so i am a freelance writer that's like the main way that i bring in an income and so i write for various publications and i most of them are military focused and um, one is like Intel focused about like different events ha happening around the world. I love to learn. So getting to write about different topics is really fun. And then I also host a podcast where I interview women who've served in the military. And so that's called Women of the Military. And I love getting to meet fellow women veterans and hear their stories and learn the history of women in the military. And then the last part of my business is I'm an author. I've written two books, Women of the Military, which is very similar to the podcast with stories of women who serve. There's 28 stories. And then A Girl's Guide to Military Service is my second book. And it's a guide for high school girls who are considering military service because I saw a need for resources targeted specifically for girls who are considering the military because right now, everything is con targeted toward boys. And there might be like a chapter about what it's like to be in the military as a woman, but there's not anything specific that it's like a guy telling, it's like mansplaining, a guy mm -hmm. telling a girl what it's going to be like to be in the military. So I wanted to create a resource that was specifically designed for girls so that they could get their questions answered and have a strong foundation for military service. Wow. So you have done a lot in the past uh, since you left the military. Yeah, I've done. Yeah, I've done a lot. It's <laughs> it's a labor of love. So it it is a lot, but it doesn't always feel like a lot. So now do you do you want uh, to become an advocate for women in the military eventually? Yeah, I mean that is where I'm working towards. I am trying to be a voice for women in the military and to help advocate and change and I've gotten opportunities to talk to so many women that I never, like, I've talked to general officers and, you know, all these women that I, like, admire, and then they want to come and talk to me and be on my show. And so it's, like, opening doors to opportunities, and it's been really cool in that aspect. And so, yeah, there's there's a lot of the women that I admire are older than me, and so I'm like, one day I could fill their shoes and take Jeez. on the role of what they're doing. Exactly. So do you feel like um, eventually you will have to provide more services to uh, women that want to join the military for them to understand what they are signing up for before they sign up for it? Yeah, I've started working on like the the pilot program for a mentorship program because yes. I feel that if if you're getting out of the military as a woman, sometimes it's really hard because people don't always respect your service. And so it's easier to just not talk about being a veteran instead of having to argue with someone to explain, no, That's I true. actually served in the military. And so if we can create like a cycle where women are supporting women and like women who are just joining can be supported by women who are just in and then women who are thinking about getting out or moving up in their career can have someone who's supporting them in that tradition. And then it also keeps women as they leave the military connected because they're able to give back. And I think as veterans, there's a strong sense of purpose. So it's for, you know, mentorship, but it's also for the mentors to be able to give back and stay connected to the military community. And so that's one of the things I'm working on, but I'm sure there'll be more stuff as 
time goes on. So if I understand it correctly, it's not just you that's going to mentor this woman, but also you're going to have other mentors, like perhaps the people you have in your podcast that's yeah. already been there, done it, that's all actually going to mentor this woman and, and support them and guide them. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I joined the Air Force and I served in the Air Force. And so my experience is limited. There's like, there's six branches in the military and there's so many different career fields. So I want people to, I, I also don't have the time to mentor everyone. <laughs> and so if I have a team of women who have like a breadth of experience, that just makes it better for the young women who are looking to join the military because they have all these women that they can talk to and all these people that they can get advice from and they don't have like I'm I'm not a good enough resource I need just like my book it's not just my story it's all the stories that I've collected over the years because it's not like join the air force it's the best branch even though it is (laughs) but, (laughs) but even though it is the best branch uh I still think that it's the best branch for me, but that doesn't mean it's the best branch for everyone. And so I tried to lay out like as many stories and different experiences and sharing about all the different branches, as many career fields, just so that people would find what's right for them, because that's what's most important. It's not following someone's path because that's what they did, but finding the right path for them. So now what about the the women that are coming out of the military like you did? transitioning from, you know, traveling all the time, being all over the place. It's a whole different type of living when you're in the military. Yeah. Compared when you get out, you become just in a civil and it's just, I'm back home. What's next right. for me? So do you have any plan to support them as well? Like they coming out, what do you think that would be the things that they will need? And not only that also, how do we as people of this country support them? Like, what do they need? What are they looking for as women? Because they just spend 10 years of, or 10 years, 20 years of the time not living a normal life like we do. Yeah. So, I mean, originally when I was starting writing my book, I was trying to provide a resource for someone transitioning and someone gave me the advice, like, where's the earliest place you can help people in the process? And that's how we came up with the idea of joining. And so that... Orig- the original plan was transition, but then I started with joining. So like I'm planning on eventually doing more books and more focusing, but there's also a lot of PhD students who are women veterans who are doing research about the tr- transition out of the military. So I'm kind of watching what they're doing and I'm planning to utilize a lot of their different theses um, and dissertations to help inform that book. Because what I've learned is that even though women have so many different experiences of like, you know, being a mom, being married to a service member or being single, being a single parent, like there's so many, there's still a lot of commonalities and challenges with transition. And so if I can find a way to make sure women know that they're not alone and like, I felt like I was doing it wrong because I didn't go out and get a nine to five job. I stayed at home with my son, Mm -hmm. but like, Everyone has their own path, but a lot of the emotions and stuff. So I am working on it. I'm it's in my introvert brain, so I'm like processing it in the back. Um, but it is something that I'm thinking about and something I'm really passionate about. Do you think that uh, the number one thing will be to have a community that can people you can talk to that's understand? Because sometimes perhaps they've been to um, war and then, I don't know, different things they've seen that we haven't seen, nightmares and all these things. Yeah, I think I think that I felt really alone and isolated in my experience. And it wasn't until I started talking to other veterans and getting involved in the veteran community that I realized, oh, I'm not a unicorn I'm like everybody else and like I that actually gave me a lot of comfort that like the emotions I was feeling were normal and not just I mean they resonate more with women veterans but male veterans experience the same thing and so the overall community and I think what civilians can do is like ask questions I get a lot of people who find out I'm in the military and then they like don't know what to say and be like yeah you should just say like well what was that experience like like did you deploy like Anything just to ask and also be aware that some people don't want to talk about it and don't be offended by that. Just say, oh, okay, thank you for your service. But like, I would just open with a question if you find out someone's a veteran and say, oh, what was that experience like? And if they say, 
oh, I don't really like talking about it. Be like, okay, I'm just, if you ever want to talk about it, I'm here. Yeah. Um, and thank you for your service. Those, I think that's what the civilian community can really do because it's, it's disappointing when people are like, oh, okay. And then they just walk away and they oh, don't want to yes. hear for your time. But I think that I always find the stories very interesting interesting because they like they seen things i haven't seen they've been places i haven't been and it's for me it's like uh behind the scene of the country that's how i lo lo usually ca yeah. call it behind give me the behind the scene of the country that i don't know about because really do we know everything that's happening in the country right probably what you went through in the military no one has ever heard of it in the world only you know about it so if I can hear it from you, it's like the biggest thing ever. Please let me get my drink. Come on, fill me in. <laughs> so I, yeah. you're right. You're right. We should actually listen. If you want to talk, I'm all yours. Talk about Let's talk about it. Maybe just talking about it maybe will make you feel better because uh, I can imagine the things that as women, uh, I felt like it's everywhere. It doesn't matter where, if, you, if you're working in the corporate world, if you're in the military, I think that all the biases are everywhere as women. When we go, we, yeah. we just leave them. And I think that um, have someone to listen to them, it's, it's, it's a lot. It, it's it's mean a lot. So that's how yeah. I see it. And people should listen. You are right. They, sh they should. But anytime you want to tell me your stories, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We well, can also listen to the podcast. I mean, I that's did. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I did. I listened to a few of your episodes. Yeah. Aren't they great? I mean, the stories are so amazing. Not me. I'm saying, like, aren't the stories amazing? Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, like, you listen to people that, like, the things that they are saying, it's like, oh, my goodness, this happened? Like, you'll right. never know. You will never know. So, like I said, they, like, they happen, but they're just not public. And I don't right. think the government want them public either. So, I think that listening, I think your podcast is one of the big ones. Like, if you really want to hear a military uh, woman, what they are suffering from, I think just listening to them talking, you'll be surprised. It's, yeah. it's hard. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of the stories are really hard and then some are really inspiring. And like, yes. there's such a mix of gamut of stories. And then I get to become friends with my guests and it's like, I mean, I just feel so like you were talking about like, we do you feel lonely? I was like, yeah, I felt so lonely, and then I started a podcast. I like started collecting <laughs> friends from the podcast, and so it was really, it's really amazing. So, if you had a chance to go back to the military, would you go back? Oh no, <laughs> 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 no. Well, my husband is almost to retirement, and we are we're ready to not move. We're ready for stability. Mm -hmm. And um, I would like not, I wouldn't mind going back as like a consultant where I had like the control, but there's a lot of sacrifice of being in the military and giving up a lot of control. And it was really hard to leave. And for a long time, I would have said yes to that question. But now I'm really happy with the work that I'm doing and the purpose that I found after service and the way that I can yes. still give back. And so. I am appreciative of my time. I don't regret serving. I think it was great and it opened doors for my future, but I that's that's in the past. I'm done with that. <laughs> I think you enjoy being the mom right now. <laughs> I do. I do. I love being a mom. So I know that you talk about your um your first your first book which is Women of the Military and you have in that book you have about 28 women who serve in the military. So yeah. how did you actually get to get all of the stories to be able to publish that book? Yeah, so I originally did a deployment series in 2017, uh, part of Write 31 Days, where you write every day in October. And so I asked everyone I knew, I posted in Facebook forums, I like tried to get stories and I like scraped together stories for that series. And it ended up being almost all women. And that was how, like, the journey of focusing on women. Originally, my plan was to focus on, like, the deployments because we were at war and there were so many stories. But then all these women told me their stories and I was like, cares about deployment. And so I started <laughs> focusing on women because women in the military are just so amazing and they have such diversity of stories. And yes. I didn't know them. And so I was like, who cares about 
been in the military. They already have people talking about them. So that's where <laughs> I started focusing. And I published or I put a Google form in a women veteran group on Facebook and I got over a hundred responses. And then I would go wow. through the initial questions, write questions back, send an email. And then at the end, I only ended up with like 28. So there's like hours and hours of work doing interviews and back and forth to get the stories. And like a lot of my emails back never came back to me. So yeah, that's how I, that's how I did it. So you wrote the entire book yourself. They didn't contributing. It's just, they tell you the stories and you wrote it yourself. Well, it's question and answer based. So it's, yeah. So I wrote the questions and then they wrote the answers and then I edited them. Um, but yeah, so it's not, it's not a narrative story. It's like question answer. Answers. So yeah. you love to write, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I love to write. <laughs> I probably will run away from that. <laughs> so the second book, which is A Girl's Guide to Military Service, I love the one, um, like you said earlier, you're focusing more on high school girls considering to join military. So now where can they get that book? Um, it's available at my website, www.airmentomom.com. And then it's also available on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles. So those are like the main places that you can get it. And it's also on my publisher's website, elvarisa.com. So as a military spouse and mother, how do you balance your personal and professional responsibilities? Uh, I don't know. No. <laughs> I, I really have learned to create processes and systems, especially for the podcast. Like once the podcast episode is recorded, I create the intro, I create the show notes, I create the graphics. I do like all of that within like the first hour after the episode is recorded. And sometimes I do the editing, but usually I don't have time to do that as well. But I try and do like, you know, batch it all together so that way it's fresh. When I first started, I would record the episode, then I would, you know, work on other things. And then mm -hmm. eventually I'd go edit it. And then I would work on the show notes as I was editing. It would, like just took forever. And so I've learned different ways to like cut time out of the process to make it so that I don't waste time on different things. And then I use Asana to help track all the different writing projects that I'm doing for the different freelance companies so that It'll tell me like today it was like, you have an article due. And I was like, yes, I know. And it's already almost written. So that's so I use those tools and then um, lots of processes and systems to make sure everything works. And I know that you're working on the coaching program. Do you have a plan when you're going to launch that? No, that's like that's one of the things I'm working on. But it's like I have to I need to find more time. Uh, to get it going. Um, so it is, it's something that is like an idea and I'm actually partnering with someone and we're trying to work together and get it off the ground. And so now we're just trying to find time in both our schedules so that we can meet and talk about it. So, um, hopefully in the next six months we can start. Yeah. We but it we will gonna... be on your website, right? Yes. Everything will be on my website so you can find it at airmentomom.com. So as a freelance uh, writer, how do you approach writing about military topics? And what are the, some of uh, the most important messages you hope to uh, write uh, and to help people understand how the military works or, or whichever other message that you're trying to pass on to, to people? Yeah, so I mean, it's Women's History Month. So women's history is really important to me. I learned about so many women who stepped up to serve during World War II. And then after World War II was over, men came back and they wanted their jobs back. And like a lot of the progress that was made by women during the 1940s was erased. And so what? I've been, yeah, there were women pilots during World War II. And then the next military pilots weren't until the 1970s. Right? I see your face. Like, yeah. And women couldn't be combat pilots until 1993. You're right. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, in, 19, in the 1940s, they weren't flying overseas because they weren't allowed to, but they were ferrying pilots and uh, 38 women died in accidents during World War II. And so 
it wasn't a dangerous mission, even though they they were on in this country in the United States. And then there were just so many women who were spies, who did code breaking, who did all this stuff. And so I've been really trying to get their stories out into the world because I've been reading all these books and like learning about these amazing women that if I don't know about them and I'm a woman veteran, why would a civilian woman know about them? You know, why would men know about them? So, and I just learned about this other group of women that were POWs in the Philippines when um, the Philippines was captured by, I think, Japan. And they were like the whole war and there were 77 nurses and they all survive in the internment camp and they took care of the soldiers and like they have this amazing story and like two weeks ago I didn't know they existed and like I'm like how are there more stories of women like who did these amazing things during the 1940s and people have no idea we don't and that's and that our kids that growing up that are young children girls that growing up and I think that it's important we share this for whatever reason they are buried into the ground so deep right. where we can ever find them. And um, it's bad. I think that is bad because if this generation, if we know how all the things that women already done for us, it's make a huge difference. When I'm not talking about celebrities. Right. Let's talk about the one that's actually really do the hard work with their hands. I mean, like that done something. And I don't know why. I don't know why that they always hide what we do. Why do men get to be in the spotlight all the time? Why can't we be in the spotlight? Like, we do so many great things in this world, but it's, it's hiding. And it, it was the same thing to, uh, in school. I didn't learn about a lot of women, but not until I was take, doing my MBA and I started to learn about, um, Walker, which is a, a late, that was the first black, um, millionaire in, 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 in United States. And I started learning about all of this woman. It's like, well, why people give Oprah all the credit all the time? <laughs> she did it. <laughs> so it was kind of like CJ Walker did it. I mean, that was the first black that did it. Mm-hmm. And I get to learn about uh, the, that girl that's the first woman that's, uh, that was, uh, went to space. And I was learning about uh, this woman that step up and uh, fight for um, woman voice. And it was like a mix of women all over the world. The first Chinese that's actually got the PhD that where all Chinese couldn't get it. And it was like, oh my goodness, we can do this. If they were doing it in 1940, technology wasn't exist like that. So imagine now the power that we have. But you're right, sharing this type of stories and letting other women know someone else did it. So you can. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, love it. I mean, I mean, there's so many stories. I mean, I, I don't know if you know about the 688. They're the female black uh, battalion that was deployed to France. Yeah. And they're yes. doing a movie on Netflix. Um, Tyler Perry is. Tyler Perry. Direct- yeah. And they just announced it. I'm really excited to see it, just to be able to share their story. And they got the gold medal from President Biden. For their service there's only a few of them still alive but like their story is so inspiring there's just so many amazing stories of women i mean not just in the military like i'm focused on military but like you were you were talking about all these other women that like we don't know their stories and we need to because that does inspire like i go into classrooms because even though i have boys <laughs> i go into my boys <laughs> classroom for veterans day and i talk about my service and at the end the teachers always like to ask, like, who wants to join the military? And it's so exciting to see girls and boys raise their hand. And it's not just, you know, so because they see me and they don't think that they can't do it because they've seen a woman who's served in the military. And so they don't think it's a career field just for men. They think anyone can do it because anyone. she's up here talking. So. Yeah, I love it. And I think we both have the same vision in mind, just in a different way. And um, right. I, do, I love supporting women, uh, see them shine. Uh, doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. For me, it's we need to have a voice. Uh, we need to. They need to listen to what we have to say, because we when we talk, things happen. We don't go out and fight. We don't go blow up the world. We try to make t- 
things in peaceful way, but I, for me, that's the best way to go. And I think that on one day we need to have our voice higher than men. I, I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's the fact that um, we need to save our world. And the only way we're going to save it is us as women because we give birth and we know how it feels to to give that. And the world yeah. is the same way. Everything around us is bursting out it's coming out and that's what we do as women and that's why we can see it in a whole different way compared to how men seen it so um that's why i advocate myself to that and you advocate yourself to helping women but in the military and uh, it's a different kind of branch but uh we are doing the pretty much the same thing and i'm grateful always to meet other women who just pick to i know it's a it's, it's a it's a very um hard choice uh, dealing with women is not easy because we are stubborn in every single way you can possibly think of. But um, at the end of the day, if we don't stand together, I don't see any changes will happen. Nothing will okay. happen. So now, bef- one last question that I have for you. What are your future plans for uh, Elmen to Mom LLC? And how do you hope to continue making an impact in the military community? Yeah, so I'm working really hard to get my book into recruiting stations and into high Mm -hmm. schools because I really just want the book to get spread across the country so that people can utilize it and share it with young women. And I think if they have all this information about what the military is, is like, it'll open their eyes and inspire them to join. And I think there's a lot of hard things that the military, I'm not going to say it's easy, but there also are a lot of great benefits. The VA home loan, the GI bill, there's, you know, a chance to see the world, a chance to learn a career field and like change your life completely. And so I think if women know that that's an option and then they have like a resource that can help them, it could change their life. And I, I'm really passionate about helping (laughs) to change that. And the military is really struggling with recruitment right now. And I think one of their main problems is they're focused primarily on boys and not boys. girls. And so if they focused on everyone, you know, if they focus on girls just as much as boys, I think that could solve their problem because the, I mean, the percentage of women in the military is about 20%. And Ooh. if you just started focusing on recruiting more women and it was 50 50, you, there, your recruiting problem is solved. Solved. And, so, <laughs> and so, like, yes, it'll take time, but like, that's what I think the military and I think even our country needs. Like, we need both perspectives. Like you said, you need men and you need women to talk about you know, look at it from both sides because we do look at the world very differently and we see different things. And I think the more women that join, the more women who will stay. They're like, why don't we have women who are staying? It's like, well, you only start with 20% and then they get out. So like, you're exactly. not going to have your- Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm really passionate about. I really want to, you know, all the hard work of writing the book. Now, now it's part two, all the hard work of getting it out so that people can read it. I think that's um that's a great idea, especially having it in the school. And I think that's what started, and in, in, especially in high school, that's where we decided what am I gonna do next? I'm almost yeah. done here. So I think it's the perfect perfect way to kind of help them and guide them. Hey, would you like to consider this? And this is what to this is what might happen if you decide to pick that path and get yourself ready for it. Well, I thank you, Amanda, for all of what you are doing for military women because um. We need a voice and it's great to hear it from all the women that's actually done it, been there, done that, and help us understand it. And also what you are doing, also helping other women that's never been in the military to understand it. So perhaps um, they have a client that's been in the military, help them understand how to deal with that client because it's different. It's a different situation, different type of problems. So don't quit. Don't stop. Keep going. (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Female Founders Podcast. That's it for this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast app or connect with us on warmel.com so that you don't miss our next episode. See you next time. Bye for now.